now the real pain begins, Danny boy. Terry Silver, the villain of Karate Kid Part 3, has many fans. And I'm so glad to have heard from so many of you in the comments of my previous video, Why Terry Silver Rocks, which you can check out by clicking the link. And today, I want to take a deeper look into the character and find out what Terry Silver wants, which, spoiler, could be important in Cobra Kai the series because it's very heavily implied that Terry will show up in season four. I'm Ken Cole. Be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think about Terry Silver in the comments. A lot of you have asked, why does Terry Silver, this multimillionaire with a successful business, just drop everything to get revenge on a kid and an old man for someone else? <laughs> That's silly. Or I've also heard this a lot. Terry Silver must be the best friend anyone could ever have. Look at what he does for Kreese. He spends so much time and money to get revenge for Kreese. So is this true? Is Terry Silver doing everything for the honor of John Kreese? And would Terry be the best friend you or I could ever have? In order to answer these questions, we need to take a look at what Terry Silver wants, and then we'll know why Terry does what he does. So what does Terry Silver want in life? Well, from watching the character in Karate Kid 3, we notice a few things. First, and this is big, he wants to be in absolute control in every situation. We see this in a number of ways. For one, he craves status. Using his wealth, Terry has elevated himself to a would-be aristocrat. He has at least one mansion, which is a Maya-inspired palace. He has an entourage of European live-in servants who do his bidding. Margaret, his personal assistant, coordinates his illegal activities, but sets an elitist tone, feigning disgust at Terry's methods. Mr. Silver! Lighten up, Margaret and scoffing at bad-mannered Mike Barnes. So what do you think? Oh, he's obnoxious. Milos, his butler, does butlery things, like opening the door for Kreese. Oh, Mr. Kreese, good morning, what a surprise. Some coffee. And getting Terry's robe in the bath. Milos, uh, my blue pinstripe. But he also handles the paperwork for Terry's illegal operations in his company, Dynatox. Mr. Silver? What? Plutonium deal. Whenever we see his servants, they're working hard to please him and have things ready the instant he demands them. Sir, where are the magazines I ordered? Right here, sir. The one time we see an employee maybe have second thoughts about dumping toxic waste, Terry immediately puts him or her in their place. Don't bullshit me. What do you mean you can't dump it in Borneo? Who in Borneo knows what chloride sludge is? Just do it. So we're starting to see a controlling pattern in his professional life and a desire for power. The first time we see Terry, he's sparring wearing a Cobra Kai gi, which by the way, we've never seen Kreese practicing karate or sparring in his spare time. So Terry's an active practicing Cobra Kai martial artist. He's sparring against his hired thugs who really are no match for Terry. Maybe Terry keeps bad fighters around so he's in control and wins every time. We also see how he enjoys control and power in his personal relationships. His friendship with Kreese is quite interesting because Kreese used to be Terry's superior officer, his captain in Vietnam. And apparently Kreese saved Terry's life multiple times. How many times did you save my ass? I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> so in Vietnam, Kreese had the power and the friendship. And while Terry still at least pays lip service to that, it's very clear that the dynamic in the relationship has reversed. Terry now has all the power. At least in Karate Kid 3, the only thing Kreese had in his life was his failed Cobra Kai dojo, which Terry owned. In fact, Kreese had been paying rent to Terry. Here are the dojo keys. What are you talking about? I'll pay you that back rent as soon as I can. Now that he's broke, John Kreese has to give back the dojo keys to Terry, and he isn't in a position to challenge Terry on anything. Watch carefully in all of their scenes together, and you'll see that Terry's the one calling the shots in the friendship. And Kreese just goes along with Terry every time which is very interesting because John Kreese is such a menacing presence in these movies, except when he's interacting with Terry Silver. And that fits the pattern of Terry wanting control over everything. He's very happy being friends with John Kreese because, in part, Kreese won't challenge Terry's need for control. So what else does Terry Silver want? Well, he wants to inflict pain on his enemies. If you're his enemy, he wants you to experience pain. 
pain, 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 pain. Now the real pain begins, Danny boy. I think he says that word more than any other in the movie. Along with his need for control, Terry loves to set up elaborate schemes to manipulate people without them knowing it. Excuse me, Mr. Silver, you can't make me do something I don't want to do. <laughs> Danny, Danny, Danny. From the moment you met me, I've been making you do things you didn't want to do. He loves to create many steps to his schemes and to watch them being pulled off perfectly. Remember the game plan. First you win a point, then you lose a point. Keep the score zero zero. Pulverize him for the full three minutes. Then in sudden death, you get the point, we win. I want him to experience pain. He's a perfectionist. Perfect. 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 And delights in his carefully laid plans paying off. He also gets a thrill from doing illegal things and getting into trouble. And not just in his Dynatox business. For example, the nightclub scene with Daniel. This is extra fun for Terry because it's a manipulation scheme to con the creeper guy into provoking Daniel to punch him in the face, combined with the thrill of getting away from security. This is a new experience for Daniel, but it's pretty clear that Terry has done this before. He knows right when they have to get away. Come on, come on, we gotta get out of here. And we briefly see Terry almost turning into an adrenaline pumped kid. Oh man, that was beautiful. You didn't even think. Something got in your way, bang, down it went. He gets such a rush from Daniel breaking the guy's nose and enjoys it so much. Technique and killer instinct. You got it all now, kid. Maybe this is the type of fun he and Kreese used to have back in the day, possibly as part of a Cobra Kai initiation with other soldiers. So in light of all this, why does Terry Silver put his life and his successful business on hold just to get revenge on a kid and an old man? Is it just because of devotion to John Kreese? and he wants to do right by his Cobra Kai friend? Maybe, a little. And I think we non-villain people want to give Terry the benefit of the doubt. We want to give him some redeeming qualities. But I think we also need to look at what Terry Silver really wants in life. Total control over every situation. Absolute power in his relationships. You're going to Tahiti, now. Causing pain to his enemies, getting a thrill from doing illicit things, and pulling off elaborate manipulation schemes to perfection. I think it's pretty clear that Terry's mainly doing this because with Daniel and Miyagi, Kreese has brought to Terry the shiniest, most gleaming toy that Terry's had in a very long time. He gets to indulge in everything he wants to do. After all, he's rich and probably bored at Dynatox. Listen to how Terry first tells Kreese about his plans. What's his name, Miyagi, and that punk kid? I'm gonna get them for what they did to you. They made you suffer. So I'm gonna make them suffer, and suffer, and suffer, and when I think they've suffered enough, then I start with the pain. Look, Terry, you don't have to do that. Don't have to, I want to. Creasy even seems a little hesitant, but Terry insists because it's going to be a lot of fun for him. And why wouldn't it be? He gets to engage in deception, a multi-level manipulation scheme where he causes direct pain via hired thugs, creates a fake friend persona to corrupt one of his enemies, Daniel, while using the corrupted Daniel to inflict pain on Miyagi. He's controlling them in a 3D chess game they don't even know they're playing. When Terry asks Kreese for any special requests, listen to what happens. Make his knuckles bleed. Hey. I like that! Oh, I like that, Johnny! I'm gonna use that! <laughs> he loves this so much because it's hilariously brutal and petty. And it could be the icing on the cake, the denouement of his complex manipulation scheme. In fact, Terry engineers everything about his interaction with Daniel to eventually make Daniel's knuckles bleed. Everything from the fake wardrobe, the beater truck, the fake fight with Mike Barnes, loaning the book on sweep techniques, offering Daniel classes, and yes, the quicksilver method with the wood and pipe dummy, and even Mike Barnes' picture on the back of the wooden face, all of it was specifically designed to eventually make Daniel's knuckles bleed. Look at Terry's reaction when he sees that his complex plan has been executed to perfection. It's blood. He can barely contain his glee. Great moment from Thomas Ian Griffith. This is the stuff Terry Silver lives for. So we can see that Terry Silver is mainly out for himself. He's perfectly happy treating everything and everyone as a tool to get what he wants. Where does this leave his friendship with Kreese? Best friends? 
Well, I think if Terry can be a friend to anyone, he's a friend to Chris. But we have to remember that Terry wants control and power. And even though he doesn't say it out loud, it seems like Terry thinks of himself as better than Kreese. Mr. Terry Silver! We can see this at the tournament, when Terry takes the stage to give a speech about the new chain of Cobra Kai dojos, which supposedly belong to Kreese. I've always lived my life by the rule, if you get, you give. He pays some lip service to Kreese, but it's really all about Terry. Together, we are about to open a chain of Cobra Kai dojos, where young people can come and learn the same values I've learned. Also, when Miyagi fights Kreese, Terry actually smiles as Kreese is getting his butt kicked by Miyagi, and it doesn't phase Terry at all. In fact, he just mocks Miyagi and says, Come on, little man. Let's see how good you really are. So Terry thinks of himself as the superior martial artist and the true test for Miyagi. Also, after Miyagi knocks him into the mirror, Terry becomes enraged and says he, not John Kreese, is going to teach a Cobra Kai. You think this is the end of it all, man? I'm gonna open Cobra Kai dojos all over this valley! Hell! I might even teach for free! Until he remembers Kreese as an afterthought. Well, that means Cobra Kai karate! John Kreese's karate! What does all this mean for future appearances of Terry Silver on the Cobra Kai series? Well, from what we know of Terry's character, I'm sure he'll love to find creative ways to hatch evil schemes and hurt his enemies in every possible way. Terry has a lust for total control and power, so he'd likely want to toy with Miyagi-Do before crushing them, and possibly gain control over Cobra Kai, which is now famous again in the valley. Maybe we finally see Terry's plan for a chain of Cobra Kai dojos? Regarding Kreese, well, Kreese appears to call him at the end of season three, which means they're still on good terms. But calling Terry could be a double-edged sword for Kreese. If Kreese unleashes Terry, letting the Cobra out of the bag, so to speak, Terry might take things in directions even Kreese doesn't expect. I'm sure Terry would be very effective and would delight in helping Kreese take down his enemies as long as Kreese doesn't challenge Terry. If Terry starts to take more control over Cobra Kai, it'll be interesting to see if Kreese goes along with it or not and what that might mean for their friendship. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and let me know what you think about Terry Silver in the comments. Did I miss anything about Terry Silver? <laughs> I'll see you next time. Ha, ha, ha.